Hey bakers, my name is Sasha Handel and I'm your host for today's episode of Alt Baking Bootcamp with Well and Good. I'm a baker, a certified nutrition coach, as well as a trainer at Berries in New York City. And today, you and I are going to be making mini lemon pound cakes. Yay! We're using a really fun blend of gluten-free flours and all vegan ingredients, so whatever your dietary preferences are, you can enjoy one of these. Your traditional pound cake earns its name from literally using a pound of butter, a pound of flour, and a pound of sugar. We'll still be using flour, butter, and sugar, but this time we're gonna swap our all-purpose flour for a fun gluten-free blend, our cow's milk butter for a vegan option, and we're sticking with cane sugar because all of the alternative sweeteners that I use just didn't yield the same crumb that I was looking for, so cane sugar it is. Now, vegan butter is slightly less high in fat than your typical cow's milk butter, and it takes much less time to temper. What I'm using here is just the Mykonos brand that you can find pretty much at any grocery store, and it consists of sunflower seed oil, a little bit of coconut oil, and some cashew milk. All of those things are really high in fat, and that's what's gonna help bind the pound cake together. You want to ensure that your butter is just at room temperature and not too warm. You're going to start by adding this to your mixer as well as your sugar and we'll cream them together for about four minutes. Your butter will cream quicker if it's in smaller chunks. However, to avoid a mess, you want to cut your butter while it's still cold and easy to come off of your knife rather than when it's warm and kind of mushy. While your butter and sugar are creaming, you can go ahead and make your flax egg. Your typical flax egg is made with one part flaxseed meal to three parts water, but this time we're swapping the water out for almond milk. Now that's gonna have a little bit more fat to it, and so the ratios are slightly off, but they're gonna yield the same binding, kind of creamy texture that you're looking for. So I've got my flaxseed, all in a big bowl, and then I'm just going to use a whisk or a fork if you've got it on hand. Once you've got it all incorporated, you're also gonna add your lemon juice and your lemon zest. So in the time that it takes you to zest your lemon and juice them, this should have thickened up quite a bit. I, however, have already done all of the hard work. I have zested my lemon and juiced it, and I've also added my vanilla extract in here. I like a lot of vanilla, so it calls for one tablespoon, but you can really kind of run amok and even add two. Add that right in. Give it another whisk. So we'll leave this over to the side and we'll move on to our aquafaba. We're gonna add two tablespoons at a time and you're gonna mix it for 20 to 30 seconds on low in between each addition. Here's one. Here's two. If you're worried about how your butter, sugar, and aquafaba look, that's okay. It looks as if it's breaking the butter, and because it's not actual cow's milk butter, it is doing that. But not to fret, because as soon as you start to add your other ingredients, everything will combine really beautifully. After a lot of experimentation, I ended up going with a combination of almond meal, oat flour, and millet flour. The fat content in the oats and the protein content in the millet really lent itself to like the dense, buttery pound cake texture that you're used to when using a pound of butter and a pound of all-purpose flour in your typical recipe. So I've got all of that, including my leaveners and my salt. And if you see this little bit of yellow, that's just a teaspoon of turmeric for color. It doesn't impart much flavor, but it does give a really bright yellow color to the final baked product. If you've got a pastry cutter or a flour sifter at home, you just wanna make sure you're getting rid of any of the clumps. That'll ensure that your batter comes out super smooth and so does your final little muffin. So now we'll add one third of your dry ingredients and half of your wet ingredients. Turn on the mixer and then we'll do it again. We 
we've got a muffin tin, we've got our cupcake liners, and I've sprayed each one of them with just a bit of canola oil. And all you need to do is fill them about three fourths of the way up. Once you're done filling, you wanna bake them at 350 for about 13 to 14 minutes. Give them a quick rotation and then another 13 to 14 minutes or until your kitchen smells like lemons. And while they're baking, I'm going to make the second part of this recipe, which is just your vegan whipped cream, AKA bean cream. And to get that recipe, you can click down below in the description or go watch our berries and cream episode. As a reward for your extreme exercise and patience in letting your pound cakes cool completely, you add all of your bean cream on top, generously I might add, and then let's taste. I'm gonna take the one with the most cream on it. Mmm, that one was just cream. Oh my God, it's so good. The millet flour and the oat flour both have high fat and protein contents. This really hit the target on the texture that you're looking for in a pound cake. To find the recipe for these beautiful little lemon pound cakes, you can look in the description below. And for more like this, subscribe to Well and Good. See you next time, bakers. <laughs>